the mill before deadline, sir. There won't be any more. Good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Who'd have thought so many astronomers would apply for a mission into deep space? Well, if I had thought, I should have known it's what any astronomer might do. Applications here from men all over the country that I never heard of, and only two of them can go. But your staff has to choose three for training. Yes, Dr. Ellis, three for training. Now, how'd you like to make the selection? Uh, not me. My job is to make sure the three winners stay healthy. Macaulay? Not me, not me. You're going to be in command of this mission. Now, what do you suggest? Nothing right now. It would take the wisdom of Solomon to get us out of this. Yes, but time is getting short. What did you say? Well, I said it would take the wisdom of Solomon to get us out of this. That's it. We turn the whole problem over to old Solomon. Why not? We let the computer pick the three top candidates. There's no chance for human error. And the results are purely scientific, right? Right. <laughs> Sergeant. A team of human relations experts would take months to make the selection. Old Solomon can do it in seconds. Yeah, there's only one thing we have to remember, General. Old Solomon here is just a machine. that will give us the right answer as long as we ask the right question. The program is completed, sir. Fine, let's have the answer. Yes, sir. Dr. M.C. Gallagher, first choice. Dr. Caleb Fisk, Dr. Torrance Alexander tied for second place. Ooh, it's gonna be tough leaving one behind. Do you know anything about him? Only that Dr. Gallagher is responsible for the theory that high energy radiation may be concentrated near the apex of the Earth's shadow. Well, that proves the validity of the choice. Sergeant, ask these three men to report for training instruction on Monday morning. Yes, sir. Morning, Sergeant. Morning, Colonel. Any word from our astronomers yet? Yes, they're on their way to the base right now. All three of them. Good. Send them in when they arrive, will you? I think the general's expecting me. Yes, sir. Morning, sir. You're lucky you didn't say good morning. What's wrong? Did you by any chance study the applications of these three top-ranking astronomers? We left all that up to old Solomon. Uh, old Solomon, yeah. Take a look at M.C. Gallagher's physical description. Height? Five feet, five and a half inches, weight 117 pounds. Hey, he's a little fellow, isn't he? Comes up to about my shoulder. Yeah, a little fellow, just about up to your shoulder. Read on. Chest 36, waist 23, hips 35. Uh, MC, uh, what do the initials MC stand for? Muriel Catherine. Old Solomon doesn't have any concept of sex, you see. Well, what do we do now? She's out. I won't allow it. It was one thing to take a woman to the moon as an experiment, but this is a working mission into deep space. And I'm not going to see the Air Force playing nursemaid to some dried up sexless spinster who probably was born with a slide rule in one hand and a table of logarithms in the other. General. Macaulay, don't interrupt me. Space is man's last refuge from the female sex, and I don't intend to see it invaded. Dr. Gallagher, I presume. Yes, Colonel. And my colleagues, Dr. Fisk and Dr. Alexander. But I don't want to interrupt the general. You were saying something extremely interesting. Oh, yes. I, well, I was saying, uh, I was saying, uh, Oh, yes, General. Finish your story. Uh, what did the old spinster say to the captain? What? Oh, oh yes, uh, of course. Well, she said, uh, Captain, nothing you say matters because uh, in space, you see, uh, you don't have any weight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about me. No, of course not. I, in fact, we're delighted to see you. Well, won't you sit down? <laughs> Is this story true, Colonel? Did old Solomon select some dizzy female for this mission? 
Oh, I'd like to hear the rest of that story, too, Colonel. What did the dizzy female say to the matron? 